Welcome to Lewisburg United Methodist. If you're joining us on Facebook live stream, then you can see all the things that we're doing. If you're joining us on Greenbrier Radio on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., we hope you'll be able to tune in and listen with your ears and your heart. We also have another worship opportunity. On Tuesdays at noon, behind the Huddle House, we offer fresh air prayers. It only lasts 15 to 20 minutes, but we hope that you come and bring a mask and bring a chair. We also have a prayer circle that joins um, each other every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. And if you'll come join us for some prayer for our community and for our church and for our world, you do get free breakfast. So we hope you'll come and be a part of that. Let us open our hearts to worship through song. I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny it's going to be a bright, sunshiny day. I think I can make it now. The pain is gone. All of those bad feelings have disappeared. Here is that rainbow I've been praying for. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Look all around, there's nothing but blue skies. Look straight ahead, there's nothing but blue skies. Clearly now, the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's 
gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, sunshiny day. Yes, it's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. As we prepare to light our coronavirus candle and have Sarah, one of our interns, um, join our hearts in prayer, we are asking that if you have a personal prayer request that you would like to share among this community, please go ahead and send that in now so that we might be in prayer for you. Father, this morning we want to take a moment to just um, pray over our current situation with the coronavirus. Um, we pray for the leaders of our community and for our nation and our world, and we just pray that you give them wisdom um, to navigate through the situation and to protect the public. We pray for our schools and our churches and our businesses. Please just guide them as we try to create solutions and methods of reopening. And God, we lift up those who are currently struggling with the virus. Um, we pray that you just give them peace and rest and comfort and also just protect those um, that are with them, the healthcare workers and their friends and family as they try to comfort them through this tough time. God, these requests sometimes seem big and daunting to us, but we can come to you confidently and boldly with these requests because we know that they are not too big for you. So thank you for being with us today and for loving us. Amen.
for our children to gather around so that you can hear our children's sermon. Today we're talking about how sometimes we ask for things that we really want, and we even ask and pray to God for things we want. Hey, but Bev? Yes? Can I have one of those cookies? One of these? Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, okay. Here you go, Cal. Oh, have a cookie. Thank have a, you. Have mama, a cookie. Mama, have a cookie. Mama, oh, mama. oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yes. Is that? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You're quite messy. Anyway, mm. like I was sharing with our friends out here, sometimes we ask for things that we really want, and we think they're what's best for us. But <gasps> often, yes. can I? Those, that was really good. Can I have another one, please? Just one more. Uh, oh, okay, Cal. <laughs> Oh. You really like those, don't you? Good. Okay. Let me talk to the children. Okay. Sometimes when you pray, God always hears you, but not always does he give you exactly what it is that you're praying for. You know what I'm praying for? I would love another cookie. Uh, uh, That'd be so good. Uh, oh, okay, Cal, this, this, this mom, is going to have to be your last mom, one because you're really making a mess in our church. It's really messy. Okay, so I wanted to share with you a Bible verse that talks about how Sometimes we don't always get what we pray for. Can, I'm so sorry. Can I just have one more, please? No more. Because just like I'm demonstrating for the children and probably should say to you, we don't always get what we want. Here's a scripture verse from Paul, who he loved Jesus very much, and Jesus loved Paul. But Paul had been asking God for something. In fact, this is what he says. Three times... I pleaded with the Lord to take this painful thing away from me. But God said to me, my grace is enough for you. And oftentimes in your weakness, in your wants, in your desires, I can meet you right where you are. You know, sometimes as we pray for things that we want, God sees the bigger picture. And he knows how to best guide and direct us. Amen. Please stay tuned for a children's song. As we continue our hymn series, today Tyler will be sharing one of his favorite, which is Be Thou My Vision. So listen with your hearts and ears to our scripture read by Ian, and then enjoy hearing a special song, Be Thou My Vision. Ezekiel 37. I'll put people over you, my own people Israel. They'll take care of you and you'll be inheritance. Never again will you be a harsh and unforgiving land to them. God, the master, says... Because you have a reputation of being a land that eats people, clean them up. They'll be my people. I'll be their God. My servant David will be king over them. They'll all be under one shepherd.
Thank you. It was not an easy task to narrow down to only select one favorite hymn, but I ended up choosing Be Thou My Vision. As I looked into the background of this song, it's quite complex. It originally began as a hymn, or as a poem, like most of the hymns that we sing today. It's believed to be written by St. Dolan Fergale, a popular Christian poet in Ireland. And then sometime later, it transitioned into a classic Irish hymn. In 1905, a young woman by the name of Mary Elizabeth Byrne, who was graduating school in Dublin, Ireland, translated this song into English. And then seven years later, a woman by the name of Eleanor Hull translated this song again into English, shortening it in the process. And when I was in the fifth grade, I had a teacher who was allergic to a product they would put in many types of colognes and perfumes. And at the beginning of the year, they give us a lecture on how we are to never spray anything in the classroom. So we agreed. But as you know, a lot of things can change during the course of one year. One morning, she was finishing up her bus hall duty, and we were sitting unsupervised in the classroom, which is never a good idea. I remember a student in our class named Austin reaches into his book bag and pulls out a can of Axe body spray. And then he walks over to her desk and he begins to soak her chair in Axe. A hush fell over the classroom. We couldn't believe what had just happened and we were anxious to see what was about to happen. And then a girl in our class managed to sneak out without anyone seeing because you know it's never cool to be the tattletale. But she goes and she tells the principal what happened. So a short while later our principal walks into the room and he opens up the windows and he brings in a new chair and then he leaves and he takes Austin with him. As I look back on that morning though, I recognize how lucky our teacher was because although she was not very popular among her group of students, she still had one girl in her class that managed to look out for her best interest. That morning, I guess you could say, someone else was her vision for the things that she could not see. Isn't that similar to what God does for you and me? God is always looking out for our best interest. God always serves as our vision. Recently, at Fresh Air Prayer, which we have on Tuesdays at noon, behind the huddle house, I gave a devotion on how sometimes our prayers go unanswered. And sometimes when our prayers go unanswered, 
those are the greatest blessings in our lives because God has something greater in store for us than even we dare to imagine. You know, there's a story of a homeowner, and one morning he, he wakes up and he walks outside and he sees a strange dog sitting on his patio, and the dog has a newspaper in its mouth. So the, news, so the homeowner grabs the newspaper and gives a treat to the dog. You know what happened? The next morning, the homeowner wakes up again and he walks outside, and the dog is sitting there on the porch, this time with eight newspapers surrounding I love the way the second verse phrases it here at the end. Great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. You know, our treasure, our reward in this life is not from the appraisal of others, not from wealth or fame, but it's in knowing our Creator. And if we started viewing our relationship with God as more of a treat, more of a reward, a treasure, rather than a duty, this world would be a much better place. The third verse says, Great God of heaven, my victory won, may I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven sun. In these past five months of quarantine, or however long it's been now, um, one part I've enjoyed is I'll have youth group students reach out to me with questions they have. And I have this one student in particular who's reached out to me on multiple occasions late at night. And he has all kinds of free time in the evening now. So he's been thinking long and hard about some topics, about life, about faith. And the last time he reached out to me, he said, I'm a little scared of heaven. Now, that, that seems like a weird thing to say. But then he went on to explain that in his words, I'm not really sure what heaven will be like, and eternity is a very long time. You know, I think we get it after hearing that explanation. I think we can all share somewhat of the same feeling, that although Scripture gives us a few details on heaven, we would like to know a lot more before we become residents. But we discussed things some more, and I tried to comfort him any way I could about this topic. And then at the end, he said, although I'm a little scared and anxious about the thought of heaven, I do know that's where I want to go. Isn't that all of us? The end goal for every person of faith is to make it to heaven and to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's, that's our end goal. That's our final destination. And when we arrive there, we know that we have safely made it. I haven't talked, I haven't addressed our scripture for today yet. In Ezekiel 37, I, I love the way the message version phrases that last verse. I will be their God and they shall be my people. I chose that as our scripture for today because well, Israel needed reminded of that time and time again in the Old Testament. That's a common theme throughout Scripture, that I will be their God and they will be my people, regardless of how many times they turn away, how many times they miss the mark. I will be their God and they will be my people. The last line of this classic hymn reminds me of that, when it says, Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. It offers us assurance that God is always directing our footsteps and looking out for our best interest. So our prayer for today is that our hearts would be transformed and begin to reflect the very heart of God. Amen. Thank you for sending in your prayer requests that we might be in prayer for you. We do want to lift up Thelma Berkeley, who had a fall in her home and has broken her pelvis. And so please be in prayer. She's in the hospital. And I want to mention that we've created a ministry called Blessing Baskets. And who knew that it would be such good timing? Because right now, even as a pastor, I am not allowed in to the hospital. So it was delightful yesterday to be able to take her a basket from this church family full of hospital goodies and 
devotion books and bookmarks and things to just let her know that we're praying and thinking about her. If you have not had the opportunity to donate um, items to the Blessing Basket, we are in need of individually wrapped Kleenexes or little bottles of hand lotion, um, devotion books, certainly some snacks that are individually packed. So if there's a way you'd like to donate, um, we would be glad to receive those or bring your baskets that you're not using because we also need baskets. So let us join our hearts in prayer. Today we send prayers for Karen Goodall. Prayers for Jim Talbert and the family. Prayers for Phyllis Oval and Colette Dawn Bland and Dana Moyer's friends with COVID. We pray for the children, parents, and educators as they make decisions about reopening schools. Prayers go to Carolee Christian's sister, Jerry Stickler, whose first procedure didn't work. Prayers for Joan Elmore and Doug Sissing. Prayers for Kim Richmond, who is Scarlett Kellerman's daughter-in-law, who has been exposed to COVID-19. Prayers go to Judy Accord French's daughter-in-law. Prayers for a five-year-old that was just recently diagnosed with leukemia. Prayers for all those who would need it. Prayer goes to all the unspoken prayer requests today. Prayers for our essential workers and health care workers. And prayer for our church, family, and friends near and far. God, we thank you that you are our vision. When the things that we see do not make sense, when there's ways that we are crying out to you but we don't yet have the answer, we know this, that you are faithful, that you are always good, that you do what is loving. Today our scripture as we talked with the children was Paul crying out to you and saying, three times I've asked you and three times you've said this, My grace is enough. In weakness, I will show my power. So we trust you this day. Amen. Thank you, Tyler. I like your hymn too, Be Thou My Vision, and thank you for sharing that with us. May we leave here today focusing on that God directs every footstep that we make. Amen. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves someone like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see.
I can see clearly now The rain is gone I can see all the obstacles In my way Gone are the dark clouds That had me blind It's gonna be a bright Bright sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright Thank you for tuning in and watching Lewisburg United Methodist live stream worship. I'm Rev Bev Colombo, and I want to thank you for the ways that you have continued to give and support the ministries of our church. We miss being with you. We miss gathering physically together. But until we can do that again, we want to continue the ministries of this church. So thank you for your gracious giving. And if you would like an opportunity to give to the ministries of our church, you may do that by mailing a check to P.O. Box 69. You can go on our website and click electronically the Give button, or you can come by the church. Our office is open during the week now, and we'd love to see you. Thanks.